Good day my scholars, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra. So in this video, we'll be solving the jam CBT pass question for the subject Literature in English Year 2012. Please stay with us, do not go anywhere, and we'll be right back. Welcome to my school channel. So in this video, we'll be solving question 1 to 20 and I'll begin with question 1. This question is based on general literary principles. A literary work in which the characters and events are used as symbols is known as dash. The answer to this question is allegory. Allegory is a literary device in which characters, events, places or images are interpreted to represent a hidden meaning which usually have political or moral significance. Now in this in this case, allegory are symbolic because they represent something that's not obvious, but then it usually has a hidden meaning. Okay, so allegory is the answer to this question. Option A characterization. Characterization is the way an author uh, describes what a character is like. Okay, in his text. It describes what a character is like. It describes the personality of a character. When we speak of metaphor, metaphor is a direct comparison. When we say A equals to B, or we say B equals to A. Okay, parallelism in literature, we look at the sameness in sentence structure. Okay, so we think of um, parallelism. When we think of parallelism, we think of sameness in structure or grammatical um, structure. So the answer to this question remains option B, allegory. Question two. Characterization in a novel refers to dash. Option A, writer's opinion of the characters. Option B, way the characters are revealed to the reader. Option C, characters and the way they behave. Option D, reader's opinion of the characters. Okay, so the answer to this question is option B. The best answer to this question is option B. When we talk about characterization, characterization is the way the author has described his character. Now, for example, take for example, things fall apart by um, Chinua Achebe. When we remove the character Okonkwo from the context, we can't describe it. We can only describe the character Okonkwo in the context of the text. So it is the way the author has described him. That is how we interpret it. So the best answer to this question is option B, the way the characters are revealed to the readers. That is characterization. However, option A and C are very quite tempting, but it does not give a good description of what characterization really is. Okay, so option B is the correct answer to this question. Question three. In literary work, verbal irony refers to a dash. Now, we all know irony is an expression of the opposite, okay, when you say the opposite of what you really mean, okay, and we have three primary types of irony. We have the dramatic, we have the verbal, and we have the situational um, irony. Now, here we're talking about the verbal, and we can actually logically tell what verbal irony means, because it, verbal has to do with the mouth or oral, or orally, okay, so it has to do with what you say. So, let's look at the option device in which the speaker means the opposite of what he says. Now, option A is the correct answer to this question. However, let's take a look at option B, situation in which a character speaks or acts against the trend of events. Option C, difficult situation which defies a logical or rational resolution. Option D, device in which the actor on stage means exactly what he says. Now, from these options, we see that option A is the best answer to this question. Question 4. In theater, words spoken by a character that are meant to be heard by the audience but not by the other characters on stage is called dash. Option A, aside. Option B, soliloquy. Option C, acoustic. Option D, tone. Now, the answer to this question is option A, <coughs> aside. Now, the problem here with students is differentiating between aside and soliloquy. Now, think of aside as speaking to the audience and think of soliloquy as speaking to oneself. With this, you'll be able to differentiate between aside and soliloquy. So according to this question, it says, words spoken by a character that are meant to be heard by the audience. So it, it's directed to the audience. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 5. 
Drama is a representation of a complete series of actions by means of dash. Option A, movement and gesture for the screen and audience. Option B, speech, movement and gesture for the stage only. Option C, speech, movement and gesture for the stage, screen and radio. Option D, speech, gesture and movement for the screen and radio. The answer to this question is option C. It's a means of speech, movement and gesture okay for the stage that is the theater screen which is the tv and radio so option c is the correct answer to this question question six a poet's use of regular reading is known as dash now when we look at or talk about structural reading or regular reading we are referring to meter okay so meter has to do with a regular rhythm in poems okay so we know the famous type of meter is iambic that is the popular or the famous type of meter so the answer to this question remain option c meter question seven a literary general which directly imitates human action is dash the answer to this question is drama drama is the literary general that imitates human action that represents human action by speech movement or gesture Okay, so option A is the correct answer to this question. Please do not forget that you can take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass questions. All you need to do is you click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website. There you have to download My School Mobile app for your Android phones and My School software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing these questions. Now moving on to question 8, a fable is a story in which dash? Now a fable, a fable is a fictional story that teaches moral lessons and it features animals. So let's take a look at the options. Option A, allegations are made about characters. Option B, animals or things are used as characters. Option C, there is an important setting. Option D, the story is told in poetic form. Now, from these options, we can see that option B is more suitable to the definition I gave earlier. So, option B is the correct answer to this question. I believe you are enjoying this content. If yes, do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 9. The juxtaposition of two contrasting ideas in a line of poetry is dash. The answer to this question is oxymoron. Oxymoron is the um, placing side by side two contradicting words, two words that are opposite in nature, like ugly and beautiful. Okay, so describing someone as beautifully ugly, those are um, oxymorons. Okay, that's an example of oxymoron. So the answer to this question remains option D, oxymoron. Question 10. The main aim of caricature is to dash. Now, when we think of caricature, we think of cartoons. And one thing about caricature is that it exaggerates a person's characteristics. Okay, so if the person has a maybe a big e ear, it makes it bigger. So it exaggerates um, a person's characteristics just to create a comic effect. So it is ridiculous in nature. So uh, the main aim of caricature is to ridicule. When we think of ridicule, is to mock. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 11. O oh, ceremony, show me what thy worth, what is thy soul of adoration? The figure of speech in the lines above is, the answer to this question is apostrophe. Option D is the correct answer to this question. When we speak of apostrophe, apostrophe addresses a thing, an object, an idea, a concept as though it is physically present. So you can see, O oh, ceremony. Okay, so option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 12. What eyes will watch our large mouth shaped by the laughter of big children? What eyes will watch our large mouth? So this is Biradio Vanity. Now in this context, we see that this context is ridiculous in nature. It is jeering in nature. It is to mock a particular group of people. Okay, so what eyes will watch our large mouth shaped by the laughter of big children, adults who are crying? Okay, so that's the picture we can paint here. Yeah. So the tone of the lines above is one of dash. It is sarcasm. The answer to this question is sarcasm. Do not forget that sarcasm is meant to criticize something in a humorous way. So it does it comically 
it does it in a way that we, we laugh when we, we when we think about it or when we read it okay so sarcasm is also a subset of irony that is saying the opposite of what you truly mean okay so the answer to this question is option a sarcasm question 13 this question is based on general literary appreciation. The old man slept in his favorite chair. The wind ran its fingers through his hair. It looked like a tree gone dry of sap, and his hands were dry upon his lap. So the rhyme scheme of the poem above is dash. So in trying to get the rhyme scheme, the focus is on the last sound of each line. And the last sound is gotten from the last word. So we have chair, hair, sap, and lap. So with the word chair, we have letter A. So the last sound here is hair, and to take A, letter A, letter A is the first letter of the English alphabet. So automatically we go with letter A. Then the next line we have hair also, which is synonymous to the first line. So we have A also, so A, A. Then the third line is P, which we take B because it is different from the second line. And the last line is also, which will also take B, letter B, because it is the same with the third line. Okay, so we have A, A, B, B. Okay, so we can find this in option B, A, A, B, B. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 14. An equal laws unto a savage race that board and sleep and feed. The lines above show that the speaker dashed. Option A detects discrimination. Option B is desirous of adventure. Option C hates his old wife. Option D knows much of his city men. The answer to this question is detects discrimination. Just with nine one, we know that okay, someone has identified discrimination. Someone has discovered um, discrimination. So unequal laws unto a savage race. So option A is the correct answer to this question. Question 15. How can I look at oil and say I ate long shiny cars? How can I come to children and despise international schools? And concern comes and the family sees Jesus Christ in him. The feeling conveyed by the speaker above is one of dash. Now from this speech, we can tell that the speaker is hopeless, is lost. There's the feeling of hopelessness in this speech, okay, and that is despair. Despair is the absence of hope, okay? From this speech, we can tell that the speaker is seeking to find the meaning of life or the meaning of certain thing or certain existence, but all is in vain, okay? He can't find answers to this question, okay? So this is hopelessness. So option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 16. Hide me now when my children haunt the earth. Wale Shinka Night. Night children in the stanza above reflects the consciousness of Dash. Now we have option A birds, option B ham robbers, option C animals, option D speed beans. Now this question is quite confusing because when we talk about birds, birds can also serve as night they are night creatures. There are some birds that are night creatures such as how O W L. We have ham robbers who walk at night too. Okay, and spirit beings who also um, are very active at night. Okay, so it's quite confusing to know what um, Walesho Inka is really referring to. But the best answer to this question is spirit beings because the word aunt tells us that it has to do with ghosts because when you use the word aunt, it pertains to ghosts or spirits. So the best answer to this question is option D, spirit beings. Do you have questions you would like to ask? Please feel free to ask your questions by using the link provided in the description below. Click on it, it takes you to the My School website. There you can ask as many questions as possible and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now moving on to question 17. Serrated shadows through dark leaves, teal baited in warm suffusion of your dipped cells, sensation pained me, faceless, silent as night thieves. The dominant mood in the lines above is one of dash. Option A, apprehension. When we talk about apprehension, we mean fear and anxiety that something bad is about to happen. And def defiance, defiance is open resistance, when you're resistant to something. Okay, so option C, joy. Option D, indifference, that is lack of concern. The answer to this question is apprehension. Apprehension is the fear or the anxiety that something bad is about to happen. 
Do you have better steps, explanations, or solutions to any of this question? Please feel free to use the comment section below and indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 18. The drums overwhelm the guns. J.P. Clark casualties. The part in the exact above uses dash. The answer to this question is symbolism. Symbolism in the sense that the drums represent something and the drums represent the Africans while the guns represent the Britain. So the answer to this question is option B, symbolism. Question 19. They did not see the funeral piles at home eating up the first J.P. Clark casualties. The imagery created in the above exact is achieved through. Okay, so let's imagine what is happening here. From the exact, we see funeral pile eating up the first. Now, this is achieved through personification. What it means is that um, funerals or burial grounds are occupying the space, occupying the land, okay? And so this is personification because personification is giving the attributes of human beings to inanimate objects. So option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 20. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the least. All times I have enjoyed greatly, I have suffered greatly okay so this is al tennyson ulysses the lines above inform the readers the reader that the poet dash option a is determined to suffer option b as his poetic imagination kindled option c procure his soul mode option d will not drink much the answer to this question is option b has his poetic imagination kindled now let's take a look at the first line i cannot rest from travel i will drink life to the least now this is what someone that derives pleasure from traveling he seems to not have gotten enough from it and he loves it despite the fact that he has suffered greatly from it he has also he had also enjoyed it okay so the answer to this question is option b has his poetic imagination kindled we've come to the end of the segment i believe it was impactful please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly Tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.